Well, welcome back everyone. In today's video, I am going to be preparing this massive lump of rock here, which is from the Jurassic Coast up in Yorkshire in the UK. Um, this is a real big lump of bone here. Uh, it weighs about 12 kilos or 25 pounds. And I'm pretty confident that it contains uh, the partial skull of the marine reptiles, uh, ichthyosaurs, which uh, swam in our oceans around 180 million years ago. It's uh, not going to be an easy prep. Um, it's a pretty hard and pyritic lump of rock. As you can see when I'm prepping down here, this is a, um, a really tough bit of rock to get through. Um, but I'm going to do this quickly in time lapse and you'll see uh, how I'm progressing. As with most of these videos, I'll always put a description of the equipment that I'm using uh, throughout these videos in the description at the bottom, so you can read a bit more about those. Uh, the uh, tools that I am primarily using in this, however, are air scribes, which are connected to a big air compressor, and they vibrate against the rock um, and ping off little uh, or large chunks of the rock, depending on the pen that you're using. One of the best ones that I use for this job and works brilliantly on really hard matrix and particularly pyritic matrix is this uh, Zoic Paleotech T-Rex pen. It's an absolutely phenomenal pen that just uh, tears through large chunks of rock and really takes a lot of the time consuming uh, part of removing the matrix um, out of this. Now, because I filmed this process from start to finish in time lapse, uh, you do get to witness all of those initial stages where I just spend time removing all of that large lumps of rock and you often never get really that close to, uh, to the bone itself in those early few hours. Uh, in fact, I'm just about getting down to the bone here. You can see the, the brown bone um, coming out of the, of the matrix there, but it's, it's fairly st slow progress these first few hours. So perhaps it's a good time to just remind ourselves of, uh, of what what an ichthyosaur is. Ichthyosaurs were an incredibly successful group of extinct vertebrates, and despite the fact that they look pretty dolphin-like, were in fact reptiles, marine reptiles, which evolved, I guess, around 250 million years ago um, in the Triassic period, and then uh, lived all the way through to the Cretaceous around 90 million years ago. The one I'm working on here is around 180 million years old, so kind of right in the middle of their existence. Incredibly streamlined in terms of body design with paddles on either side to help them swim swim, and this enormous rostrum or set of jaws at the front, packed full of teeth. And I guess that's what we're hoping to see, whether we see the evidence of the teeth within this jaw section. In fact, we're starting at this point here to see those teeth coming through. Now, when you're working on the teeth, um, it's critical that the, uh, that the process slows down. In fact, I've moved to a tool here, which is a, a far less powerful tool, but works, helps work on, the, on, on a bit more of the finer detail, which is the Paleo Tool ME 9100. Um, I'll use an even more detailed tool a little later, uh, later on, but this is great for kind of roughing out those teeth, but you've got to be super careful that you don't go so close to the teeth that you actually ping off a bit of the enamel. Um, that's, a, that's a really critical part of this preparation. Now there are other ways in which these, uh, these teeth can be prepped out. Um, often uh, some preppers use uh, acetic acid and I've done a video on that previously. Um, but I felt because of the size of this jaw and the size of the teeth that actually they could probably be prepared uh, yeah, very efficiently with, uh, with pneumatic tools rather than the use of, use of acid. It's also a really pyritic block uh, and I was a bit concerned uh, with the amount of pyrite and, uh, and the ability to control the acid. Um, so I chose the mechanical prep on, on this. And in fact, at this point, I'm just finishing the underside of the, where the two jaws join together. Um, so this is the very bottom of the jaw. And then uh, we'll pause and have a look at where we're up to so far. Okay, so here we are at the halfway mark. Um, I've probably put about eight hours in so far to this. As you can see, the bone is really showing through of this ichthyosaurian cross section. And there is no doubt that it is certainly an ichthyosaur. I've exposed roughly some of the teeth um, on one side of it, but I haven't yet done the, done the teeth on the other side. Um, and actually what you can tell is it's also quite far back on the rostrum, but just before the eye sockets. That's what this section of the skull is. In fact, the bone that I'm pointing to here is part of the uh, sclerotic ring, uh, which is part of the uh, bones which are held within the eyes of ichthyosaurs. So let's start prepping out the, uh, the other side. Now, I'm 
just about to start prepping here the right hand side between the upper and lower jaws to see if I can expose the teeth within there. Now one of the problems with ichthyosaur teeth is that unlike most other reptiles which have tooth sockets, if you think about uh, uh, crocodiles or plesiosaurs which have regular intervals between the teeth and they all grow from sockets so it's pretty obvious where the teeth are going to come in. With ichthyosaurs the teeth grow along a tooth canal and which means that as they grow they can uh, come out at different angles, they come out at different depths, um, which means that you don't know exactly uh, where these teeth are going to be. So you have to take it enormously slowly as you're going through this, where you're taking just the matrix down, trying to get to a level, but then carefully dig around uh, to find a glimpse of the black enamel or perhaps some of the root. And then you work to expose the rest of it, working very slowly along the, t along the tooth. It is very slow progress um, because they are um, often quite difficult to find um, and, uh, and you just don't know where they are. So um, it's quite fun. Um, and challenging at the same time. So we're really into the final stages now where I'm just cleaning up all of the edges, uh, particularly in this cross section so you can see all of the bones on, uh, in the jaw and as well as cleaning around each of, the, uh, each of the exposed teeth to make sure that it's a really nice and clean finish. In a second you'll start, me, you'll start see me applying a liquid which is called Paraloid B72 uh, which is kind of a plastic coating um, diluted in acetone and that really helps seep into the bone um, and protect uh, the bone uh, from the elements um, uh, for, for the long term. Uh, and you'll see me applying it here with a, with a brush. I usually give that a few, a few coats to really let it penetrate in. So here it is, the final the finished prepped ichthyosaur partial skull. It would have come from an absolutely enormous ichthyosaur. Um, the teeth have come out really well, despite them being pretty pyritic. I think they've cleaned up really nicely. What I really love about this piece is you can see all of the cross sections of the bones that fit together of the ichthyosaur jaw, which was a pretty complex jaw structure. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm delighted with this one. Hard to tell exactly what type of ichthyosaur. Could be a temnodontosaurus, um, although the teeth are a little slimmer than you'd expect for a temno. So perhaps something like a, a, a stenopterygius um, is, another, is another possible option. But I'm really pleased with this. If you like this kind of video, um, there's more to come. So please subscribe and click on some of the other playlists to see some other options. Thanks for listening.